Hey, this is Pete from the Family IT Guy. Today's video is about the rescue of a computer I found left on the sidewalk. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so that's the side panel. Two extra fans that you can manually switch on. Rather dusty. There you go. Not wiring. And a rather messy selection of cables in there. But there is a CPU fan and I think there might well be a CPU under there. And there's some RAM. DVD drive. No hard drives, which was to be expected. And looking in there. It's an Asus motherboard, which is a good brand. And that CPU cooler says AMD. Now that CPU heatsink is quite large. So that could mean, it's pretty unlikely, but that could mean that the is a quad core CPU. Well, if there is any CPU at all. And there's a uh, fanless graphics card in here. I doubt it's going to be very powerful. So, why do people throw out old PCs like this? could be rather noisy, the power supply could have failed and the machine just won't start, it could be overheating, it could just be that the person has got a new machine and just doesn't want to bother with this machine anymore and doesn't want to go to the trouble of trying to sell the parts individually. Now I could just try plugging the machine in but given the risk that the power supply is faulty or near, you know, may, may well damage the machine, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and boot the machine up using a spare power supply and see whether there is a CPU in there and, and whether it even operates or not. Okay, so here we are. I've taken the 24 pin connector out and put my little device in that makes a full circuit. Got the CPU power connector out. So the only thing that the power supply is now connected to are the case fans. So this series of Molex connectors down here. So I'm just going to plug it in. Uh, there are no switches on this power supply so it can just start straight away. Yep, so the fan's going, making a quite a loud noise. You can see there's an LED fan at the front. Yep, I think the power supply is the thing that's making the noise. So we could disconnect this if I had down here and if I had three hands let me see if I can do that yeah okay so the fans are not spinning in case fans anymore and the noise remains so that is one noisy power supply I think that would get rather wearing sitting next to that on your desk, that noise with that power supply. If the power supply works, I think it's worth a gamble of plugging the 24 pin and CPU connector in and, and see whether this thing actually uh, starts or not. Okay, so here we go. 
I've got a cable plugged into the HDMI port, a graphics card, I've got a mouse, uh, keyboard plugged in, power supply plugged in. So a moment of truth, let's press that power button and see what happens. It's on. CPU fan is turning. Power light on there. And it boots. Awesome. A bit quick, but I think that said there was a, a CPU. On, well, there was obviously a CPU in there, but I think it said it was an AMD FX4100. Indeed, there is. And 8 gigabytes of RAM. Well, that's rather surprising the things that some people throw away. It's not the newest CPU in, in the world, but certainly by no means useless. Let's just see if we can check the temperatures on the machine as well. I'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, I've been watching this for a couple of minutes now and I can see that the CPU temperature is just going up. The fan speed control is making the fan go faster but it's not keeping the fan, the CPU temperature down. So I think this machine could have been overheating as well as being rather noisy and that could be one of the reasons why the person that owned it this other day didn't want it anymore. So I'm going to take a look at the thermal paste on the CPU cooler and give the thing the whole clean and see whether we can improve that temperature setting or not. But what a find! Well, I think that's a case of not enough thermal paste and what there is has dried off quite a little time ago so that probably explains why it was overheat tried to overheat yeah so much cleaner CPU's been cleaned up as well put some fresh thermal paste on there and we'll see if that uh, sorts the problem out okay well I've put the thermal paste on unfortunately uh, that's all I've got. It's run out now. Um, my little box of bits. I do have a little bit more thermal paste, but I think we might just be able to get away with that. So I'm going to put it back together and uh, see, give it another go and see what happens. Okay, it's been a good five minutes or more now, and the temperature seems to have stabilised on the CPU. Um, off camera I did note that the temperature previously got up to 54 Celsius so I think uh, reseating the CPU uh, with some new thermal paste has uh, fixed that problem. So that's good. I'm going to take the motherboard, the graphics card and install them into another case that I have, a spare case, which is just sitting down here. Uh, which already has a, a power supply in it. Well, as long as have it, I've just upgraded my file server and I bought a new hard drive. So the previous hard drive that I had is now free and available. So I think that's what I'm going to be using in the machine. Okay, so I've got the major components into the case now and I've tested it and it all appears to still work. So I haven't broken anything in moving it. So now I've got to get a hard drive in and install an operating system. So this is a bit Keith Robinson as the phrase goes. I haven't put a DVD drive in this new smaller case but I want to install Windows. I only have that on a DVD drive. So I've taken the DVD drive out 
where it was so that the cables could reach from this machine into the SATA port on this machine. So I'm using the power supply from the original machine. There's probably a simpler way of doing this, but I'm going to go with it like this. So I've finished installing Windows 7 on the machine and uh, after sourcing various drivers from Asus and from ATI, I seem to have a, quite a nice working machine. So I looked online to buy a, a license key for Windows 7, but discovered you could buy a Windows 10 license key for just about the same amount of money. So it seemed a more sensible decision to get Windows 10 installed on the machine instead, even though I'd spent uh, overnight getting Windows 7 and all of its updates installed. But fortunately, I have Windows 10 on a USB stick. And yeah, the installation of Windows 10 and all of its updates uh, took place in uh, just a couple of hours. So here we are, I'm installing uh, a game that may be a bit ambitious for that graphics card, but I'm going to see what it's like when I turn the settings down. And bear in mind, I'll be playing games on my television, so I won't need the resolution too high on that, so I'll be interested to see how it works. So whilst Far Cry is installing, I'll just show you the inside of the machine, now it's all finished. Um, one of the things I noticed about, remembered about using this case was that it does resonate a little bit sometimes from the top panel. Um, and that's due to the hard drive vibrating. But I've all managed to uh, use some screw washers on the screws there that somehow seem to just dampen the vibration enough so that it doesn't resonate as much as it used to. Uh, the other thing I remember about this case is that the standard rear case fan has a rather annoying whine to it at the standard speed. So uh, as you can see, I've got it nicely sort of tucked away there, but um, I've got a speed reducing cable in there. And that just takes the speed down by about 20% and uh, the noise is much more acceptable and quiet. So yeah, that's uh, my wiring for the, the ports and things into the case. As I said, most of those cables can be sort of tucked up in the back there, and it doesn't look too bad. And I don't think the airflow is obstructed in the case. Not that it's uh, uh, a noisy, hot machine anyway.